cars. You either love it or you hate it. And I hate it. Even after two years of working with the MCAT, I still sometimes struggle to get a solid main idea on certain cars passages just because they can be so mind-numbingly boring and obscure. It takes a systematic approach to get better at it. And fortunately, John and I have just the systematic approach for you. John has already covered the first two steps in this approach uh, in other videos, but I'm here to show you the third and final step in conquering this section, or at least learning to work with it. It's called the short and sweet method. If you learned something in today's video, make sure to hit the like button and the subscribe button so that we can keep producing this content for you guys. So again, John covered the four corners method and the house method in previous videos. And you should spend about 60% of the time that you're studying for the MCAT with those two methods. So for instance, if you're studying for six months, you should spend two months in the beginning perfecting the four corners method, then two months in the middle perfecting the uh, house method, and then you should move on to the short and sweet method for the final two months. And that is what you'll be testing with on test day. And it's funny that we name it that because it's not actually short. Um, but compared to the other two methods, it is a lot more reasonable. It takes everything that you've been paying attention to with the other methods. So, you know, a main idea, you know, the topic, the concept of the passage, biggest arguments, tone, and the author's intentions, and it smushes them all together into one single sentence. And by the way that you choose to word the sentence, that's how you get across things like tone and intentions and arguments. And the reason why you think about and take the time to write down a main idea in this way is not so that you can refer back to it later. I hardly ever referred back to my main ideas after I wrote them, but it's so that you force yourself to wrap your brain around a passage in the same way that the double AMC question writers did to extract all the most important messages that the author is trying to get across. After you wrap your brain around it in this way, even though it might take 20 to 30 seconds to write down a main idea, you shouldn't have to refer back to the passage on any question unless it's referencing a certain part in the passage. So the four corners method asked for immature main idea, arguments, tone, and author's intention. The house method required a more mature main idea that included tone and intentions, and also some of those big supporting arguments. He talked about them as columns. If you haven't watched John's videos on those, I highly recommend you go do that now. The short and sweet method calls for the most mature main idea that includes arguments, includes tone, and includes intentions by the way you choose to word your sentence. For instance, your tone should be represented by adjectives, adverbs, verbs. So for instance, if the author's tone was enthusiastic, I would choose to say Da Vinci was amazing rather than Da Vinci was good. Your arguments and intentions come across in similar ways, and it's mostly by because statements or dependent clauses. A lot of times my arguments come right after a comma. So a sample main idea would be humans are unique in their ability to imagine, which takes us to past, future, and things that will never occur. So my main idea was that humans are unique in their ability to imagine, but everything else that I added after the comma was an argument that the author kept coming back to. So we'll use this passage again for comparison's sake. John used the same passage for the four corners and the house method videos. So here it is. The short and sweet main idea of this would be the best way to critique is the formalist critic who objectively grades literature by assuming an ideal reader and ignoring fancy wordplay or emotive exclusion. So I know, like I said, that's not short, but we're not writing down arguments. We're not writing down tone and intentions, but the way that I worded that lets you know that the author is authoritative. I said the best way to critique is the formalist critic. That's very like cut and dry. There's no room for exclusion. The big arguments where the author assumes an ideal reader and ignores fancy wordplay, those are in there. Even though 
Our immature main idea started out as the formalist critic grades work objectively as the words on the page. Of course, there are smaller details in the passage that we didn't include in the main idea. And sometimes questions will even ask you to refer back to those details. But like I said, they'll either kind of tell you where in the passage to go look back um, to get that smaller detail or you will already have it in your head because you kind of cycled through all of the details of the passage when you were forming your main idea. So really the entire passage should be fresh on your mind. This is your test day strategy. This was mine and John's test day strategy. And it is our ultimate way to condense a car's passage to the main idea.